Nama Om Vishnu Padai Krishna Prestai Bhutale Shamati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharne Nere Vishesha Shunyavadi Pastyatya Deshatarne Sri Krishna Chaitanya Pramanicha Ananda Sri Advaiti Gadadha Shivasani Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Vanchikalpa Trulubhyas Chai Kripa Sindhu Bhya Evacha Paditanam Pavane Bhya Vaishnave Bhya Namo Namaha Hare Krishna Okay, very good, very good. Uh, verse 2 is very important, very instructive verse. Uh, let's see how far we get with it uh, this evening. Now, we have three cameras here. If there was just one camera, I would sort of be looking at you very regularly. But we have to look at the three cameras. <laughs> and uh, anyway, what can you do? Because we got one Facebook Live camera. We've got one Instagram camera. We've got one high definition video, high quality uh, camera recording a, a big widescreen format. All right, all right, so let's begin. Nectar of Instruction, verse 2. Uh, and let me just, uh, just remind you that questions, we welcome questions. We want questions. But what you must do is write your questions in the little sort of what you call it the feed the stream of little messages that are coming up on the screen regularly uh, you must write your questions there and Premagni Devi Dasi will collect them from Facebook Live and Kirti Kumari Radhe will collect them from Instagram uh, each day and I, I have a feeling we can finish verse 2, not today, I, I, not today, but, but certainly by tomorrow night and possibly during the course of the evening tomorrow. I mean, let's just see how it goes. So in other words, think and get your questions together. Because as soon as we finish verse 2, we'll just do the questions from verse 2. Okay, so here we go, devotees. Nectar of Instruction, verse 2. Atyahara prayashas cha prajalpo niyamagraha jana, jana sangas chaloliam cha sadbir bhaktir Vinashyati. Translation. One's devotional service is spoiled when he becomes too entangled in the following six activities. <clears throat> One, eating more than necessary or collecting more funds than required. Two, over endeavoring for mundane things that are very difficult to obtain. Three, talking unnecessarily about mundane subject matters. Four, practicing the scriptural rules and regulations only for the sake of following them and not for the sake of spiritual advancement. Or, rejecting the rules and regulations of the scriptures and working independently or whimsically. That's, yeah. A fairly elaborate one. Yeah, so anyway, we will do that in due course. So number five, associating with worldly-minded persons who are not interested in Krishna consciousness. And six, 
being greedy for mundane achievements. Aha! Uh -huh. So that's the verse. And as uh, Srila Rupa Goswami says, if you become too entangled in, in all these things, some of these things, uh, one of these things, all of these things, whatever, then your devotional service can become really spoiled or destroyed like that. There are very serious implications of becoming entangled in all or some or even just one of these. Because you know in, in Bhagavad Gita what does Lord Krishna say? Lord Krishna says that if, if, one, if the mind uh, becomes fixed just on one of the senses in terms of the attractions of that sense to, to material things, that can be enough for, for a devotee to fall down from Krishna consciousness. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Right, so let's, uh, let's have a look at the purport and go through the purport here. Uh, uh, Prabhupada, well, first of all, there is a, uh, you know, it's about, I'd say, what is it, a page and a half or something like that of just a general introduction to the verse. And then after going through that, then Srila Prabhupada takes these six uh, different uh, detrimental activities and elaborates on each one uh, in, in some detail. But first of all, uh, the, uh, the general, it's like an introduction Prabhupada gives to the overall message uh, of this verse. So, well, actually I could mention, yeah, um, if you're using our, our PDF file, I don't know how many of you are using it, but uh, at least that's one way <laughs> where we can tell where we are and refer you to such and such paragraph on such and such page. So according to our, um, our, our PDF file, this it's from the beginning of the purport, of course, to the end of the fourth paragraph of page 10. Yes, that's in our PDF file. In the book, anyway, if you, I hope you've at least got a book or you've got Nectar of Instruction in some form or other with you. I sincerely hope because uh, we will we'll refer you to specific statements and it's very good if you uh, if you can see those and note those. Okay, so here we go. Uh, now, in the in the beginning of the purport, uh, basically, well, right at the beginning of the purport, uh, Srila Prabhupada makes the point that, and it's a very important point, that human life uh, is meant for simple living and high thinking. It's not meant for high living and simple thinking or, you know, simple living and simple thinking, simple meaning foolish in that sense, but simple living, uh, not too complicated. Yeah, no extravagances. Just, just keep it uh, like very manageable and easy to deal with as much as possible. Uh, so you don't have to become involved in what am I doing and how do I keep alive and uh, how do I keep the family alive and 
all these types of considerations. Uh, so, <clears throat> so yeah, that's the first thing. Prabhupada actually says plain living and high thinking. Same idea. So then Prabhupada goes into a uh, a a little analysis of how the material world is working and what what our situation is uh, or is like or is within the material world so first of all Prabhupada brings up a very essential point it's just you know it's absolutely just part of the program that uh, since since all conditioned living beings that means you and me devotees all of us since we're under the control of the Lord's third energy Prabhupada says means the material energy uh, in Sanskrit he uses the Sanskrit terms actually Bahiranga Shakti seeing we're under the control of that we have these bodies and I don't think any of us can see the soul or the super soul but rather we have the tendency to be influenced by the material body and if it's hot we become influenced if it's cold we become influenced these are general tendencies at least on the material platform so uh, part of that whole situation is that one is obliged to work you have to do something to keep the body your body and if you've got a family the families of your bodies alive and not not simply like surviving but, but to live decently in Krishna consciousness so in order to do that you have to work nowadays some money is required uh, this is all unavoidable uh, but it has to be done in Krishna consciousness and not by not involving getting entangled uh, yes so so there are the three energies Prabhupada discusses the rest of the first per, um, paragraph is he, he's talking about the the three main energies the internal antaranga spiritual energy the tatasta shakti marginal potency that's us and the bahiranga or external energy which is the material energy so uh, we our nature is tatasta uh, means marginal so what does that mean let's just take one one minute and just focus a little on what does it mean actually to that we are marginal potency does it mean we're a bit of both <laughs> or what does it mean no actually what it means uh, what it means is that actually we are spiritual we are Satchitananda we're spiritual but as Prabhupada says here we have a position in between the two internal potency spiritual potency and uh, the external material potency we're situated in between although we have the nature the eternal spiritual nature of the spiritual potency um, but because because we're very small because we're very small um, we can become influenced because we're very small uh, and we can misuse our minute independence for these reasons there is you could say a susceptibility or a possibility 
of falling under the influence of the external energy, although it is quite different from us. The internal energy, that's more our natural position. That's where everything works nicely for us. Being fully engaged in devotional service in the eternal spiritual world where, where there's full knowledge and our nature as being fully knowledgeable, uh, it's manifest and bliss. That, that is us. We share that nature in our little way with the internal spiritual potency. But because uh, we, we are so small, we have that tendency or possibility at least of becoming influenced by the external energy, even though it's quite foreign to us. It's just not our place. We just don't belong there. But it's possible for us somehow to think that we do and then to try, try to fit into material life. But uh, because, because we are not material, because we are actually spiritual, such at Ananda, then when we try to fit into material life, uh, we fail. Yeah, there may be some very limited success, but generally uh, material life for the conditioned soul is really quite difficult. Just have a look at the great majority of this planet right now and you'll see what difficulty. It is just amazing. All right, anyway. So, yeah. So, but then Prabhupada goes on to quote, we're still in the first paragraph, um, Bhagavad Gita, famous verse 913. Mahatma Nastu Mam Parta Gyatva Bhutadim Avyayam. O Sanaprita, those who are not deluded, the great souls, are under the protection of the divine nature. They're fully engaged in devotional service because they know me as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, original and inexhaustible. Are you buffering? I can't believe it. No, you're not buffering, but some people in Facebook land say they're buffering. They definitely shouldn't be. Uh -huh. Well, I don't really know what to do about that, other than we just pray to the Lord and carry on. Okay. Uh -huh. All right then, yeah. So yeah, this is now concluding the first paragraph. We're going step by step through the purport um, so, like we said, when, when we're under the control of the material energy, life becomes difficult, it is unnatural, we don't fit in, we are eternal, but we find that apparently we're going to die. The body means the body's going to die, but, but we are conditioned, we're, we're under the control of material nature, so we think we're going to die. Oh, that's very foreign to us. That's completely foreign to us. Death, it's not possible. We're eternal. But, but it seems like that's our situation. So that's not natural. It's not constitutional. It's not comfortable. So Prabhupada says, as he's uh, presenting this Bhagavad Gita verse, Prabhupada says, when the living entities are under the control of the internal potency, they display their natural constitutional activity, namely constant engagement in the devotional service of the Lord. Yeah, so, so that's what we should do. This verse, of course, number two is a warning verse. Watch out. You know, you, you should be doing something, engaging in devotional service, becoming Krishna conscious. You should be doing that, 
Uh, but watch out. You've got these six, uh, these six types of traps which you can fall into. So to elaborate further, Srila Prabhupada goes on, we're now in the second paragraph, to, uh, to contrast to contrast the materialistic people with the devotees. Uh, in, in that verse from Bhagavad Gita, Krishna has used the term Mahatma for the devotee, devotee, devotees. Mahatma means great soul or someone who is spiritually advanced, spiritually developed. So those Mahatmas, they're very broad-minded. They don't, they're not narrow-minded, or Prabhupada says in the purport, cripple-minded, cripple-minded. They're Mahatma. Um, Maha, of course, means great. Maha mantra, the great mantra. So Maha means great. Atma means the soul, but actually Atma also has other meanings. And, and one of those is the mind. The mind can be referred to as Atma and is sometimes. So in this context then Prabhupada is referring to the mind or, or someone who, who has a broad mind as being Mahatma. Broad mind as opposed to crippled mind. Someone with a crippled mind, Prabhupada uh, says, where is it? Actually, it's in the next paragraph. Yeah, this discussion goes on for, for two, I think, two paragraphs. For two paragraphs. Cripple-minded person is Dura Atma. Dura Atma. You know, Dura is also a Sanskrit word. It has different meanings. Uh, it can mean very difficult. It can mean a long way. And it can mean like really limited and restricted to the point of being handicapped or, or crippled. I could just mention, and I think some of you have heard us before, <laughs> mentioned this, that I uh, am based and currently I am living in Durban. Durban, yeah. Dur, the same Dur. Not exactly, but it's just a little play on words. Actually, it's named after some Britisher named Lord Durban. Uh, but anyway, Durban. Uh, ban means, can mean forest, like Vrindaban means the forest of Tulsi. Yeah. So Durban can be taken to mean, eh, as a little play on words, uh, that ban, that forest of Vraj Mandala, which is a long way away. It's, it's a, the most distant forest. Anyway, don't mind me <laughs> bringing that up. Yeah, Durban. But Dur, Dur meaning in that context, distant. You know, in India, uh, if you want to ask someone in North India, how far to somewhere, then you say, Kitna dur, kitna dur, hey. Kitna dur, hey, means how much kitna, how much distance is it? Dur. But now dur is being used in the context, in the, in the sense of being very limited, very difficult, restricted, handicapped, or crippled. Yes. Uh, someone with very limited mind, uh, as opposed to the Mahatma, who has a great mind, Atma meaning, being used to mean mind. So the Mahatma is very broad-minded. Of course, our classic example of that was Srila Prabhupada. Uh, he, he was ready 
practically to, to fit the whole world in his mind, in his heart. There was a place for everyone. Even Prabhupada himself said that uh, I have one problem. My problem is I cannot think small. He was always thinking of the whole world, or often thinking of the whole world. Uh, yeah, large scale. Give the whole world Krishna consciousness. This is classic Mahatma. This is classic Mahatma. Uh, not just a certain group of people like Indian or Hindi speaking or Bengali speaking or Tamil speaking, just a particular group or subgroup, but everyone. This is Mahatma. But Duratma, Duratma uh, is a very different sort of person. Cripple minded, very limited. Ultimately, it means, you know what it means ultimately? It means they can only see themselves. So even if they're in a family situation, for example, they're really seeing things in terms of themselves. What's, what am I going to get out of this? So this is narrow-minded, cripple-minded. Uh, actually, when, when I was young, when I was young, maybe I shouldn't even mention this, but I'll, I'll mention it. Uh, it, you know, I find it interesting. I was a Jimi Hendrix fan, Hurry Ball. <laughs> and right towards the end, just before he died, uh, he came out with a particular album. And there was one song on that album called I used to live in a room full of mirrors. And the words go, I can still remember, you know, after 50 years. I used to live in a room full of mirrors, and all I could see was me. And I mean, of course, it says various other things, but let's not get into it. But that's typical of the conditioned souls in this material world. They're very narrow-minded, cripple-minded. Uh, you know, if, if they become broad-minded somewhat, then usually they can't see beyond, for example, may, maybe humanity. But they leave out the animals and everything else. And, and that's quite uncommon to be that broad-minded. Otherwise, they may be limited to their country. We are American and we are, or whatever, Russian, Indian, and we are just behind our country and the others, well, aha. Uh -huh. Or it may just be my family. But ultimately, I like humanity because of me, because I'm a human. So it's part of that cripple-mindedness. I like my country because it's my country. It's part of that narrow-mindedness. I like my family because it's my family. But ultimately, ultimately, when the, you know, in, in the final position of everything, it's me. So that's there. Uh, when people are under the control of the material nature, they, they lose the real broad-mindedness, meaning to see how all, all living entities are my brothers and sisters. Uh, we're all equal. Uh, we all have rights. We all have the rights to live without being abused or dominated. By, by any other group. 
This is real Mahatma consciousness. And ultimately, we see so broadly because everything's under Krishna and we love Krishna. So whatever is Krishna's, all Krishna's children, we love them all. And we're interested and we care for them all. Yes, so, uh, like this, Prabhupada goes on in those two paragraphs to discuss this point. And let's see, where are we? Uh, let's just have a quick look here. Get back on track. Uh -huh. So, yeah, when, when we talk about just one little point, it's not mentioned in the purport, but I thought I'd mention it because it is a nice and, and important point philosophically. In terms of what is natural for us, is it natural for us to, to be living in material life, aging, struggling, uh, dealing with health situations, financial situations, social situations and whatnot? Is that our natural position? Or is our natural position to be under, as, as Krishna says in that verse 9.13, daivim prakritim? Ashrita, under the shelter, the ashrita of the divi prakriti, the divine spiritual nature. What is really our natural position? Uh, so there is a definitive verse which Lord Chaitanya speaks in Chaitanya Charitamrita uh, and which, yeah, I didn't write down the number of the verse, I'm afraid, but I mean, I'm sure you can find it. If not, you can ask me and I'll just look it up. But this is actually, it's two verses in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Jivera Swarupoya Krishnera Nityadas Krishnera Tatasta Shakti Bayed Abayed Prakash Suryanksa Kirana Yaiche Agni Jwala Chaya Swabhavika Krishnera Tina Prakara Shakti Haya. The first line, <laughs> I'm sure you've all heard many times, and maybe the, the whole of the first verse perhaps. But here's the translation of the two verses together. It is the living entity's constitutional position to be an eternal servant of Krishna because he is the marginal energy of Krishna and a manifestation simultaneously one with and different from the Lord, like a, like a molecular particle of sunshine or fire. Krishna has three varieties of energy. That's the translation of those two verses spoken by Lord Chaitanya. Uh, so, particularly the, the very first line, Jivera Swarup Hoya. Swarup means, well, Swa literally means your own, your very own, or what, you know, whatever it is you're talking about, its own, or his own, or her very own, just intrinsically part of that person or thing. Yeah, that's uh, swarup, uh, that's swa. And rupa, of course, generally we use the term rupa to indicate form. But rupa can also mean, like these Sanskrit words, they usually have some uh, other meanings which can be utilized in suitable circumstances. So rupa although it may more often be used to mean form, but it can also mean just nature. Yes, it also means nature. So jivera swarup hoya, the, the intrinsic, 
natural, most essential nature of the jiva, the living entity, is Krishnera Nichidas, to be the eternal servant of Krishna. That's the definition. So even though we're marginal, even though we're, we're, we're marginal in tendency, we're marginal sort of in possibility, potential, but actually in terms of our construction, what, what we are made of, we are internal potency, and, and our, like our personality, our character, our natural inclination in terms of activity in life is to serve Krishna. Okay, okay, so let us move on now. Uh, what will we do? Yeah, let's try and just finish off this um, first, that, this sort of introductory part. I, I think we can do it fairly easily here. Let's just see, where are we? Uh-huh. Okay, yeah. So we're back, we're, we're back in the purport now. Prabhupada gave a couple of paragraphs to discussing Mahatma and Duratma, someone who's under the protection of the internal potency, naturally situated as a devotee, and someone who's under the control of the external potency and has become limited and restricted in, in all sorts of ways. So then uh, Prabhupada goes on to elaborate a little further about the nature of the Duratma, the cripple-minded, materially conditioned soul. Uh, that the conditioned soul Typically, and just, you know, it's just the way it is. It's just the normal thing in material life. The conditioned soul uh, is faced with uh, certain very specific problems, which just, they are just coming. They are just coming uh, regularly. And they're like a fixture in the life of the Duratma, the cripple-minded, narrow-minded, conditioned soul. So there's particularly three. Well, there's three. Uh, it's one way of looking at the situation. There are other ways, and Prabhupada goes on in the next paragraph. But let's just look at this. There's adidaivic difficulties, klesha, the word is, for difficulty is klesha, suffering. Adidaivic klesha, uh, sufferings caused by the demigods, or just the material nature, you could say, but the material nature is controlled by the demigods. So that's adidaivic klesha. Means, um, well, how about the coronavirus? How's that? <laughs> How about earthquake? How about the fires in Australia not long ago? Drought, earthquake, things like this. Then the second one mentioned here is adibotic klesha, sufferings caused by other living entities. Um, which could just be other humans abusing you and stealing from you and, you know, cheating you in business and whatever along those lines. Or it could be mosquitoes, flies, uh, insects, just other living entities. Other living entities, um, you could say, interfering in your life. Um, and third is adiatmic klesha, suffering ca sufferings caused by your own body and mind, your own body and mind, such as mental difficulties and uh, 
you know, physical, Prabhupada says, physical infirmities. Yes, so, so therefore, the, the, the Duratmas, the narrow-minded uh, people, cripple-minded, they, they are suffering regularly. Sometimes a combination of those two, of those three. And sometimes two, sometimes all three at once. Yeah, or sometimes one of them, but in different ways at the same time. Uh, so then, but Prabhupada goes on to say a slightly different perspective, same idea, but just different perspective, that really the main difficulty facing the conditioned souls uh, is the repetition of birth, death, old age, and disease. As Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, um, Janma mrityu jiravyadi, dukha dosha anudarshanam, janma birth, mrityu, death, jira, old age, vyadi, disease, birth, death, old age, and disease, dukkha, miseries, these miseries, dukha anudarshanam, when you're living in the material world, you get the darshan. You get the darshan. You all know what darshan means. Normally it's applied to, we apply it to seeing deities. But, you know, if you just want to, in India, if you just want to walk into someone's house or onto their land and just have a look, then you can, you ask if you can have darshan. So a different type of darshan. This is, this is the darshan. Of sufferings, janma mrityu jaravyadi dukkha dosha anudarshana. Yes, so so like this, this is going on. Everything is going on. Um, so Prabhupada concludes the introductory part. Before now he gets into, first of all he's going to get into uh, atyahara, eating more than required or collecting more, more funds or just more things than required, atyahara. Uh, but just before he does, Prabhupada makes the point, let me just read it, that in the material world one has to work for the maintenance of the body and soul. But how can one perform such work in a way that is favorable for the execution of Krishna consciousness? In, this, in the context of this verse, meaning avoiding those six things. Avoiding those six things which have been listed out uh, in, in the verse. So then Prabhupada, and we'll, we'll start off from there tomorrow night, Prabhupada goes then into discussing the six pretty much one by one. There's a bit of back and forth, but he, he definitely addresses all six quite clearly. And we'll look at that uh, tomorrow night. Before we go, let me just read the verse again just to refresh us, refresh ourselves. What are we dealing with here? What are we discussing? Atyahara prayashas cha prajalpo niyamagraha janasangas chilolyam cha shadbir bhaktir vinashati. One's devotional service is spoiled when he becomes too entangled in the following six activities. One. Uh, eating more than necessary or collecting more funds than required or just collecting more stuff than required. Two, endeavoring for mundane things that are very difficult to obtain. Three, talking unnecessarily about mundane subject matters. Four, and this is the more complicated one, practicing the rules and regulations 
only for the sake of following them and not for the sake of spiritual advancement or rejecting the rules and regulations of the scriptures and working independently or whimsically. Five, uh, associating with worldly minded persons who are not interested in Krishna consciousness. And six, being greedy for mundane achievements. So there you go. Uh, there you go, devotees. Uh, we've introduced the subject of this verse. And tomorrow we'll, maybe we'll just go through all six of them. We'll see how the time allows. But definitely we'll start going through them tomorrow. Uh, so thank you very much. We really appreciate your participation, your presence. Uh, and your enthusiasm, actually, it's really uh, wonderful. It's tr just really wonderful. Uh -huh. um, tomorrow, program is as usual, but let me remind you, 5.30 South African time. Actually, you know, as soon as I've chanted Gayatri after Mongol Harati, which normally means you know, 5.15, 5.17, then I'll just switch on the cameras and we'll chant Japa till 7. And then again, of course, at 5 o'clock South African time, Japa and 6 o'clock, this is evening, uh, 6 o'clock evening South African time, we continue on with the uh, discussion of verse 2 of Nectar of Instruction. So again, thank you so much. Uh, we really appreciate your participation. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Srila Prabhupada Ki. Hare Krishna.